It is a grace, sir. Blessings of grace, blessings of grace, blessings of grace, blessings of grace. Good morning, sir. And good morning, Pastor Pete. Good morning, yes, our global friends and family. Blessed be the name of the Lord for this morning and for you who are down U.S. and Canada. I'm sure that is midnight, but we thank the Lord because any time is the right time for miracles with God. Any time at all. Um, I'd like us to pray. I'm joining my precious friend and brother, Pastor Petrock, and um, it truly is a global healing event, extends to be a miracle service. And I'm just going to spend a few minutes sharing the word of God, and then we'll begin to pray and just decree and declare over as many who have connected. And I'd like you to please connect. You can call your loved ones and tell them, Apostle Joshua Selman, Pastor Petrock, uh, we're live on Instagram just to pray and speak over the people. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this moment of encounter. Thank you for this moment of power. Thank you for this moment of grace. You have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. We honor you. We love you. We trust you. And Lord, we pray that you walk wonders this morning. In our midst, you walk wonders this midnight for those of us who are far down the U.S. and Canada. And Lord, we pray that whatever time it is, you just visit your people in a mighty way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I, I want to share a few things. I, then we begin to pray because the Bible says, in the beginning was the word. So the protocol of anything in the kingdom is that the word of God must precede the anointing. The anointing does not just walk arbitrarily. The anointing walks at the instance of the word. So when the word is sent, then the anointing can now validate that which the word was sent to do. So let's start uh, with Galatians 3 verse 5. Galatians 3 and verse 5. Just preparing our hearts. He says, he therefore that ministered to you the spirit and walketh miracles among you do it he by the works of the law or the hearing of faith that means he's reminding them that someone came to your midst at a point and moved by the spirit and walked mighty miracles among you and he said, what was the basis of that kind of result? Was it just the works of the law? Or was it because there was something that he engaged called the hearing of faith? Not hearing, the hearing of faith. So here we see Apostle Paul speaking to the church in Galatia. And he's connecting the hearing of faith to the working of miracles that it takes the hearing of faith to be able to produce miracles and signs and wonders. In this kingdom, healings do not just happen. Miracles do not just happen. They happen there. There are reactions to something spiritual that happens. And Paul captures it expressly and says that the basis for the healing of the saints in this kingdom is not just the desire to be healed, it takes more than a desire to be healed. It takes more than a desire to be free financially because it's healing too. It takes, it takes um, more than the desire to be lifted, to be healed, to be free from demonic oppressions. There is a process called the hearing of faith. Not the hearing of information. The hearing of faith. The hearing of that produces faith. That means there is a kind of hearing that just gives you awareness of what was spoken of. But there is a hearing that produces faith. Scripture number two, very quickly. Luke chapter six. Let's read verse 17. The Bible says, Luke 6, 17. Luke chapter six and then verse 17. Here's what it says. He came down and stood in the plain 
and the company of his disciples and a great multitude, Jesus now, of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. The Bible says, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. They came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. They didn't just come to be healed of their diseases. They came to hear him. Something about the content of his information contained the power to heal them. Listen, you have to understand this, believers. So many people around the world desire miracles. They desire to see the supernatural. But there is nothing in their hearing that is able to bear that grace for miracles and signs and wonders. Notice here, many people believe that the secret to the miraculous is just prayer. To pray and pray and pray. But now the Bible says to look unto Jesus. We are looking unto our pattern man. That everywhere you see the healing power of Jesus, it was as the instance of the ear that could listen, that produces faith. Then there will be healing. Let's read verse 18. Same Luke 6 verse 17. The Bible says, and they that were vexed with unclean spirits also, they came to hear. And the Bible says, and they were healed. Not it was a probability. Provided there was the hearing of faith. Pastor Pete, they were healed. That means that the unique, the formula for the administration of healing more than just the anointing, more than just the power of prayer, is really the hearing of faith according to scripture. You see, one more scripture. Acts chapter 14. Let's start from verse 8. This was, this was Apostle Paul. The Bible says Paul was in Lystra. Acts chapter 14 and verse 8. Follow carefully now. And there sat a certain man at Lystra. The Bible says, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb. My goodness, my God. That means this is trying to describe why would the Bible give us that information? It was enough to know that he was impotent. But the Bible tells us the extent, how long. He's telling you that the hearing of faith sustains the power to stretch through the past and correct everything as far as as the administration of the miraculous is concerned, that even for a man who had no personal contribution to his predicament, it was from his mother's womb. The Bible traces his mother's womb to his predicament, not his personal ills. This was not a man who sinned. This was not a man who disobeyed. He came from his mother's womb. The Bible says, who never had walked. Next verse, nine. The same heard Paul speak. Ladies and gentlemen, are you following again? You see the protocol. The same, who that same man from his mother's womb never walked. The same heard Paul speak. Let's hold that. What was Paul saying? What did Paul say? Because that was not the first time he was hearing someone say something. That was not the first time he was hearing them declare about Jesus. But there was something. We're coming there. At least we're establishing the fact that if it has to do with healing, there must be the hearing of faith. We're going to come to the content. What exactly in that speaking produces faith? Because not every information heard produces faith to be healed. The Bible says the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving Kaliba Ruskadi Branda Katuziata perceiving that on account of his paying attention to him, he now has faith to be healed. So this was what the man did not have. He had passion. He had desire. He had an ears to hear. But he did not have that component called faith to be healed. Faith to be healed. That is the purchasing power for the miraculous. Faith to be healed. Faith to be blessed, faith to be saved, faith to prosper, that comes through hearing, the hearing of faith. Next verse, verse 10. It says, he said to him in a loud voice, 
now that I see that you have faith to be healed, there is no limitation again to your healing. You have heard, it says, stand up on thy feet. And the Bible says he leaped and didn't stop there and walked. He leaped and walked. If he just left, that would not be the miracle. What he wanted was to walk, but it came at the instance of the hearing of faith. One last scripture and I begin to pray. Acts chapter 8, we'll start from verse 5. Acts chapter 8, this was Philip going down to the city of Samaria. The Bible says, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. So we see Jesus, we see Paul, now we see Philip. Same formula. The Bible says he preached Christ. Aha! Philip is now beginning to bring us into an understanding of what was said. The Bible did not give us the details of what um, Paul said. They just know that they listened to him. Now Philip is giving us context to what was said that produced faith. He said he preached Christ. Not their problems. He preached Christ unto them. Verse 6. This was their own role again. Same protocol. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing. Someone repeat it right where you are. Say hearing and seeing. And hearing and hearing seeing. And if you see. cannot hear, then you cannot see. Hearing and seeing. Every time Jesus met the deaf in scripture, he did not leave them the way they were. There were two cases in the Bible that Jesus took seriously. It was not even the crippled. Deafness and blindness. In the mind of Jesus, there were two dangerous conditions for any man to ever have. He didn't mind mad people. He didn't mind crippled people. He didn't even mind dead people. There were two miracles that meant so much for Jesus. One was deafness. Two was blindness. And all through his teachings, you would find out that the faculties of the ear and the eye were his emphasis. He that hath an ear, the Bible says, let him hear. And then he says, if your eye be single, not if your leg be strong. If your eye be single, then your body will be full of light. So the entire body depends on what the eye see and what mm. the ears hear. Mm. Hallelujah. So now we establish the following. Number one that for miracles and signs and wonders to happen, that it happens at the instance of the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. That when people come to Jesus, when you go to another deity, when you go to another individual, perhaps they will give you their own formula. But when you come to Jesus, based on the authority of scripture, the Bible says what was, must happen the prerequisite for healing from Jesus is that there must be the hearing of faith. Now, what information must you hear to produce faith? When you hear the sound of lamentation, it does not produce faith. It produces sympathy. Lamenting about your situation produces sympathy. It produces psychological comfort, but not faith. The Bible says, faith cometh. So faith is alive. It has mobility. Faith can live where it is and come to the person who needs it. But there is something that attracts it. It says, faith cometh by hearing. Number one. And then it says, hearing by the word of God. There is the hearing, first hearing awareness. The second hearing that brings understanding. Faith comes by two kinds of hearing. Number one, the hearing that generally brings awareness. Then there is a hearing that brings understanding. And on the instance of your understanding, you can now release your faith. What is your faith, by the way? Your conviction. Your conviction in God and in the integrity of his person. Then the correspondent action as mandated by scripture that commits God to that aspect of your life, whether it be healing, whether it be whatever it is. That is the name given to that. The name given to that action is faith. Your conviction and your action based on God's integrity and based on God's ability is called faith. Follow carefully now because I'll soon be praying. 
follow very, very carefully. The hearing of faith, the walking of miracles, the hearing of faith to hear, to see, to receive, and to be healed now. Believing that Jesus came does not produce miracles. Mm -mm. That is truth, but it does not produce miracles. Believing that Jesus loves you is wonderful, but it's only part of the process that really leads to producing faith. You have to believe when it has to do with healing, when it has to do with miracles, listen carefully, you have to believe that the price for sin, the price for sickness, the price for Satan's dominion over your body, over your life has been paid for in full by the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. It is not just every information about Jesus or the Christian faith that releases the power to be healed. There is a unique content that must be captured in your hearing. What do you have to hear? Number one, that God loves you and he sent Jesus as an expression of his love. That Jesus came and on legal basis, he died you have to understand this. And he did not just die carelessly. He died the death on the cross. He died the death on the cross. Why is the cross important? Because it is written, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. For it is written, cost is anyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, what is the blessing of Abraham? justification by faith might come upon we the Gentiles to the end that we might now receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's what the Bible says. This is doctrine now. So the basis for healing is believing that the price, the price to purchase your healing, the price to purchase your miracle, the price to purchase this has been paid by Jesus in full. Now you have access. Whether you receive it or not is a different thing, but you have access, the Bible says. When Jesus hung upon that tree, dear Pastor Pete, he made a statement that was a verdict. He said, it is finished. What is the it? The reign of the problems that you have. The reign of sin. The reign, Satan's legal access over your body. Let me add one more thing before we begin to pray. Why is God interested in healing men? The miraculous is powerful, but particularly the healing of the bodies of men. Why is that important? And why does Satan afflict men with terminal diseases, cancers, all kinds of things? I'll tell you why. It's so that you will appreciate that the administration of healing is more than just proving that a man carries a healing anointing and wants to dispense it. You see, the body that man has is the legal access he has to function in the earth. Without a body, you do not have an authorization to function in this domain, this side of God's kingdom. The only legal authorization that you have for your spirit, remember you are not your body. Your body is a container that houses your spirit. And there is a level of health and vitality required for your body in order for your spirit to remain united with this body. When your body is deteriorated beyond a threshold, your spirit will have to leave. It's a law. If your body is deteriorated, the body will have to live in an activity that we call death. It is a separation. Death is largely your spirit saying your body has deteriorated to a point where it no longer can be able to live in it. So the Bible says, a body has thou prepared for me. I didn't just enter a body. It took details to prepare that body. Satan, knowing this, that until the saints have a body that is alive and agile and healthy to move their spirit from one location to the other, they will not be able to bet the purposes of God. So Satan would now afflict that body. That means every manifestation of sickness is death knocking on the door of your body. Every manifestation of sickness is death attempting you 
attempting you. Whether it gets you or not is a different thing. But from no matter how simple and how, how insignificant, the moment it leads to any form of deterioration of your health, it is death sending a messenger to knock to see if it can come. Because if it is allowed, it will graduate into the whole goal is to separate your spirit from your body. At that point, you now will not have a body. So longevity is a way of ensuring that your body remains healthy for you to finish the purposes of God committed to you. When we pray and we declare longevity, it's not because you just want to live forever. No, 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 no. You are making a declaration. Longevity does not affect your spirit. Your spirit will live forever. Longevity is an activity for your body. Everybody's spirit, no, no spirit needs a prayer of longevity. It will be scripturally ignorant to pray longevity on spirits. No. Spirits live forever. So longevity is not an activity of spirit. It's not a spirit thing. Longevity is an activity of the body. That means when you minister longevity, you are authorizing that body to live long and healthy. Long and healthy until your assignment is done. Now, please listen to me, dear global family. We're about to pray. You have heard. What have you heard? That the Father loves you. And he sent Jesus. The epicenter of the healing ministry is Jesus. Not Apostle Joshua Selman. Not Pastor Pitchrock. Not an anointing oil. Not water. Not some form of medium or emblem. All those things only find credence when Jesus if he's at the center of the equation, then you are ready to be healed. Paul, I mean, Philip preached Christ. He didn't preach himself. He didn't preach church. He didn't just preach doctrines. He preached Christ. Now you hear that Jesus loves you. He came as an expression of the love of the Father and went through the legal protocol that makes it legitimate to purchase sin, to purchase sickness to purchase your freedom and your liberty. That means in the mind of God, there is no barrier that stops you right now from being healed. The assignment of the anointing, therefore, is to validate that what I have said is not a lie. If I have not said anything, the anointing has no ministry. The power of God comes to prove that the speakings that come through a man of God are not lies. That it is truth. So the anointing is merely a confirmer. The anointing has to wait for the word of God to proceed. And then it can now come. And the angelic ministry and all the forces of victory in the realm of the spirit, they depend on this. Now that I have preached Jesus, his power to heal, his power to save, his power to deliver... I want you, wherever you are following, in your home, on your device, you know, across the globe, take your eyes away from whatever sickness, whatever limitation. I know many of you are holding right now medical reports that are death sentences. Many of you are holding all kinds of evil reports, oppressions of darkness. Here's what the Bible says. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good, doing good, doing good, and healing all, not some, not a few, not Americans, not Nigerians, not Africans, not Europeans, not people in Asia, healing all. If it is Jesus, he heals all. All that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now we come in the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, I just want you to lift up your hands to heaven in one minute and begin to thank God in advance because I'm about to pray now. I'm about to make declare. Someone lift your hands and you are praying. You can pray in the spirit. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. You can pray in your understanding. What are you saying? Lord, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you shed your blood on the cross for my sins. The legal basis for my freedom from sin, from sickness, from oppression. I believe that you rose again for my justification and you have freely given and now I receive. Go ahead and pray. Now you have heard the word that produces faith. I want you to ask. The Bible says, what things soever ye desire. It says, when ye pray that ye believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. 
Someone is declaring. Someone is declaring by the Spirit. This cancer, there is no place for you in my life again. Not because you have been there a long time. I found out that Jesus already took. He himself took our infirmity. He took it, Apostle Peter says, that by his stripes we were healed. When Jesus was lashed and lacerated, it was the price that was paid for our freedom. Go ahead and pray. Now, just because we're talking of healing, it does not mean that it does not apply to every area of life. Financial healing, marital healing, bodily healing, ministerial healing, healing in your mind, healing over all kinds of oppressions. Pray in one minute. I'm about to decree and about, I'm about to declare. You have a sick person. Listen to me. Listen carefully. You have a sick person. Some of you are following from hospitals. Some of you are following from deathbeds, literally. I want you to just amplify the volume. Let the people hear because I'm about to pray. I'm about to release the healing power of God through the airwaves in partnership with the dear man of God, Pastor Pete. And as we make these declarations across the globe, I want you to believe that the healing power of Jesus will rest upon you wherever you are. Now let's pray. Stretch your hands if you can. If you can see me, just stretch your hands by faith or if you can hear. And I want you to just believe by faith. Listen to me. I have walked with God a bit and I have seen his power. I stand by the privilege of God's grace to tell you that I know miracles are real. I know Jesus heals. Here's what I want you to do. As I begin to pray and as I begin to decree, I want you to believe by faith and receive it, declare it upon yourself and your loved ones, and then miracles will begin to happen all over the globe. I want you, for as many who are healed, begin to indicate immediately that the power of God has touched you. Let's know that God is doing something in your life. It is important that you make that declaration. It is important you check yourself, you do what you could not do. Take a step of faith. Take your eyes away. You are on a wheelchair, you are on crutches, you are blind, you are deaf, you are having some, some cardiovascular problem, you are having some psychological problem. Now is the time for you to be healed. Let's pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come by that name that is above every other name. The name that has been exalted above every other name. Thrones, dominions, and every name that is named, not only in this age, not only in this world, but even in the world to come. And by that name, I decree and I declare that in the name of Jesus, the mm -hmm. spirits that are at the back of sicknesses and infirmities over God's people, over our global audience, following from every nation, every family, every territory, in the name that is above all names, I rebuke that devil. I rebuke that spirit. Be mm -hmm. gone this moment. In the mm -hmm. name of Jesus Christ, I decree mm -hmm. and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power that raised Christ from the dead. Let there be healing. Let there be healing. Let there be healing. I command blind eyes be open now. I command deaf ears be open now. In the name of Jesus, heart palpitations in the name of Jesus be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name that is above all names, every bone condition I rebuke right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy over blood conditions, every kind of blood condition. I decree and declare be healed. Blood be cleansed. Right now in the name of Jesus. There's someone that I'm seeing. I'm, I'm seeing this person. You are, you are following from Kano. You are from a city in Kano. I'm seeing that your left ear, your left ear, your left ear. Kano is a region in this our nation, Nigeria. Your, your left ear has been blocked for some reason. I decree and declare, let it be open right now. Do you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm hearing a name, Jeff. There's a gentleman, you are called Jeff. In the name of Jesus. Jeff, I don't know where you are, but I decree and declare, be healed right now. You have a condition called gastritis. In the yes. name that is above all names, be healed by the supernatural power of God. Be healed. Hey. I'm seeing a woman you are following from Canada. You have a lump. You have a lump in your left breast. This is what I'm seeing. In the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Be healed. 
be healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for any and all growths, malignant growths, cancerous growths in any part of your body. In the name that is above all names, I release the anointing. And I declare, be healed this moment. Be healed this instant. Be healed in the name of Jesus. There's someone, you are losing your, you are losing your teeth. This began, I don't know what happened, but you started losing your teeth. I mean, they, they kept removing it again and again. And I'm seeing that this is an oppression of darkness. I declare uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, thus far have you come, no further shall you be, be healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now over a skin condition. The Lord is showing me a skin condition. You have, um, a, I don't know what it's called, but like a degeneration in your skin. In the name that is above all names, be healed right now. Someone you are watching, you, you're, you have a, a, a brother or an uncle, just a male and an elder person. He has leukemia in the name that is above all names. I rebuke leukemia by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now hear me, all bone conditions, all bone conditions, Alleluia. in the name of Jesus, Alleluia. be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. There's a woman you are suffering from hair loss. In fact, you are even afraid. You think it is cancer. But I bring you healing right now in the name of Jesus. Healing by Jesus. Healing by his anointing. Healing by the hearing of faith. I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural miracles are happening everywhere. We're still praying. I want you to keep receiving all across the globe whether I mention your situation or not, in the name that is above all names. Now, there are several people who are yet to have children, all kinds of issues that you have in the hospital as diagnosed by doctors, infertility of any kind, impotency, infertility. I come against you and I curse you by the God of heaven. I release the power of the Holy Ghost through the airways, and I declare, according to the time of life, return with your children. Some of you, by this time next year, you will receive that miracle and come with children, twins, triplets, even by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the mighty and even the marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Someone who has a brain, like you have a brain tumor. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I decree and I declare right now for that person, this is witchcraft. I'm about to minister deliverance shortly. But in the name that is above all names, I declare that brain tumor be gone right now. Be gone right now. Now I want to pray for people who have been oppressed by demon spirits. Satan has come to oppress people. The Bible declares in John 10.10 10, that the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus says, I am come that ye may have life and that you have it more abundantly. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, anyone oppressed by any spirit, spirits of ancestry, spirits connected to bloodline, foundations, in the name that is above all names, I declare to those spirits who have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation, the Bible Amen. declares blotting out every handwriting and every Amen. ordinance that spoke against us that he nailed it to his cross. Therefore, I declare be delivered right now by the Amen. blood of the Lamb. Be delivered right now. In the Amen. name of Jesus, I cast out those devils from your body, from your life, from your family, from your destiny, from your ministry, from your business. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare there is a man of God you are watching. Ministry has not been the best. In fact, you are watching this right now discouraged because you, you are a man of integrity. You love the Lord. You've tried everything you know to do and it looks like ministry is just not working. I decree and declare unto you the grace that makes for efficiency is called the power of performance. It says, Ooh. blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance of those things which were spoken by the mouth of the Lord. I decree and declare, let the tides of ministry change in your favor. In mm. the name that is above all names, I declare this upon you. I decree this upon you. Someone is saying, Apostle, we were born into this tragedy in the family. We don't even know how it came. 
for as long as I, I, I've been alive, I know there's been poverty, retrogression. The men are taken care of by the women. The elder ones are taken care of by the younger ones. I break that embargo right now. In the name of Jesus, patterns. Now I'm praying over patterns. Patterns that tie people down. Repetitive patterns. You saw this happen in your father's life. You saw this happen in your mother's life. You saw this happen across your territory. In the name of Jesus Christ, territorial spirits that sit over territories and manipulate their behavioral patterns to lead to failure and decadence and retrogression and poverty and ill health. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I announce the expiry of your reign over that territory, over that family. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare any situation that you have that is a long-standing issue. There are people who have had long-standing issues. You have prayed, you have fasted. It may be a court case. It may be an ill health. It may be something that has lingered and has refused to go. The Bible talked about the man in Lystra that he was crippled from his mother's womb. So it had nothing to do with him. He came and found out that this was a predicament. In the name of Jesus, my Bible declares that the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Therefore, I decree and declare, even by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be deliverance from this predicament's long-standing issue. In the name of Jesus, long-standing issue. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying over healing and miracles, but let me declare over people trusting God for jobs and supernatural breakthroughs. I believe that God is able to step in. In the parable that Jesus gave, there were men who sat down and they were not employed. And he says, why sittest thou idle? They say, no man employ us. And he called them immediately to go to the vineyard. And there was a provision for them. When God calls, the space must be created. <laughs> Therefore, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, and at the instance of the voice of his majesty, I pray let doors of supernatural jobs, businesses, and opportunities be opened right now. I pray for professionals and businessmen and those who are in the marketplace. You need healing in that area too. Even with the strike of the pandemic, people have lost money. People have lost opportunities. They have lost strategic business relationships that can help them feed their loved ones, their families. I stand by the God of heaven and I decree and declare, let there be healing. Let there be restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. The bitter waters around your life, I decree and declare, let that mara, that bitter water, let it be turned to sweet right now. Bitter experiences that have surrounded your life in the name that is above all names. If there be any experience this year, that you have had that is inconsistent with what the word of God says should be in your life. We still have a few more days to the end of the year. And I lend my voice with my dear friend and brother. And I decree and I declare, let there be sweetness for you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the Bible declares, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said, we were like them that dream, and our mouths were filled with laughter. And they said among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. He says, the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Here is the prayer. He says, turn again our captivity like the strings of the Negev. I stand by the prophetic, and I declare over you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that every captivity and every negative cycle around your life is turned in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those in U.S. in the name of Jesus. I pray for those in Europe. I pray for those in Asia. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Africa, particularly those in this nation. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, you will end well. I release the healing and the miraculous power of Me producing supernatural results in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray and I declare right now that everything that makes for death, death is the last spirit to be destroyed. And we cannot administer the healing anointing without the, the zenith of the administration of the healing ministry is victory over death. I decree and I declare 
Thank that you, anyone Jesus. and any family marked for death, that you will not enter mm -hmm. the year 2022 by reason of some tragedy in the air, on land, through sickness, through acts of terrorism, through the wickedness of men, through enchantment and witchcraft, in the name that is above all names, still within the office of the healing ministry, I declare life, life, life. Oh, death, where is your sting? And oh, grave, where is your victory? I forbid the earth from receiving your body. The fullness of your days you will fulfill. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Pastor Peter, I'd like you to lend me one more minute before I just hand the stage over to you. I want to pray. There are many people following across the globe. And even within this nation, you have followed because you saw that there was a publicity that myself and my dear friend and brother will be ministering this morning. And many of you have come. Many of you have connected. Thank you so much for coming. I want to pray in one minute very quickly for someone who is saying, Apostle, Pastor Pete, please do not end this without giving me an opportunity to know the Lord Jesus Christ. An opportunity to live for him for the rest of my life. You are listening to us right now and you are saying, Apostle, Pastor Pete Rock, I do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Perhaps I've been a Christian. I want to rededicate my life or I've heard this thing around the Christian faith, but I've not really made a genuine commitment for Jesus. Wherever mm -hmm. you are, I want you to stretch your hands and pray this prayer after me. Let it be with faith in your heart and let it be with understanding. Say after me, dear Lord Jesus, dear Lord I come Jesus. to you just I as I am. Yeah. Unable to help myself. But I believe that you are my savior. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I declare that you are my savior, you are my Lord, and you are my king. I declare you, that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From today and for the rest of my life, I walk in victory and I walk in newness of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. By the way, let me tell you, dear family, that today is Pastor Pete Rock's birthday. So this, this is, this is uh, among other things, in honor to his birthday. So you may want to do well to help me appreciate and celebrate my dear wonderful friend and brother pastor petrock i love you with all my heart beyond ministry i love you you are a great friend you are a great brother may the lord bless you happy Amen. birthday and i led my voice with your church members and all who love you sincerely and all you have impacted within this nation and across the globe to just pray and agree that the best is yet to come for you that it will be from glory to glory it will be from grace to grace in the name of jesus christ i declare that the lord will anoint you the more and in the name of jesus he will multiply your visibility and he will grant you grace in the name of jesus so please do well here's what i want you to do for me as as a blessing to our dear friend and brother pastor petrock i want you to please uh, send him a birthday wish. Happy birthday, dear Pastor Petro. That's what I want you to do for me. Let him know that we love him. It's his day. Let's celebrate him so lavishly. He's been a great blessing to me. Thank you so much, Pastor Peter. I love you. God bless you. Thank Over you. to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle. Uh, I'm going to turn on the comments so that those that want to share their testimonies, you can now start yeah. sharing your testimonies. Let the world know what Jesus has done for you. Um, and if, if you cannot share your testimony here, you can connect to any of the platforms. You can send your testimony to Koinonia Global or you can send your testimony to One Pit Rock. Let, let the world know, be, be very expressive and be very bold about what Jesus has done for you today. Be very expressive and be very bold about what Jesus has done for you today. Um, you can also share it on all of your platforms, um, on your own pages and just tag Koinonia Global or tag one Petro and say, this is what Jesus did to did for me while Apostle was praying. This is what Jesus did. This was the prophetic word that was released. Um, you got saved today on this platform. You can tag and just say, I got saved. Um, I need guidance. Just send a word immediately and somebody will be willing to reach you and pray with you and give you counsel. 
if you're not attending any church and you got saved today, where, whatever nation of the world that you are in, just send a message and guidance will be given to you as much as we can. Thank you, Apostle. I need everyone to know that Apostle came out of his retreat. He has gone into a retreat session and he gave, he gave us the sacrifice um, to come out of the retreat just to be with us. I want each and every one of you to just say thank you, Apostle. We love you, Apostle. I want you to send messages um, to the platform and just appreciate him for this awesome time. Apostle, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Um, thank you, very grateful for the opportunity to do this with you. And thank you for the sacrifice that you have made, especially um, early hours of the morning, um, to come out and just to pray with us and to bless us. We love you. And we want to say Merry Christmas to you. And happy New Year to you too. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Pete. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Bless you.